So in this question, we're told we have a Bohr model diagram for a neutral oxygen atom. So this is a correct diagram over here for a neutral oxygen atom. Our first question asks us, according to the octet rule, when are atoms most stable? So this is just a definition. And the answer is that atoms are most stable when their valence shells are completely full, not partially full. So the goal for an atom to be most stable is to have the valence shell, that's the outermost shell that has electrons in it, to be completely full. Okay, so now let's have a think about our atom here. It asks us how many valence electrons does this neutral oxygen atom have? So we can go ahead and count them. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Remember, we're only counting the ones in the outer shell. Those two in the inner shell don't get counted because they're not valence electrons. So we've got six electrons in the outer shell, six valence electrons. Now it's asking how many electrons would this neutral oxygen atom need to gain or lose to become an ion? So when an atom becomes an ion, it's going to obey the octet rule. So it wants to end up with a full valence shell. So right now we have six electrons in our outer shell. And we know that for this shell, which is the second one to be full, we would need eight electrons in it. So we've got six. If we were to add two more, one here, and one here, we would have a full valence shell. So we would be obeying the octet rule. So ideally, this atom would gain two electrons. So we can answer that here. We would like to gain two electrons. Okay, next the question asks us, what would this ion's charge be? Okay, so let's think about this. So we know oxygen is, let's just check on a periodic table. Here's oxygen. Oxygen has an atomic number of eight. That means it has eight protons. So let's just write that on our diagram here. We've got eight protons in our oxygen atom. And now the number of electrons we have is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We've got ten electrons. And we should remember that protons have a positive charge, plus one. Electrons have a negative charge, negative one. So in a neutral atom, we would have eight protons and eight electrons. So eight positive, eight negative, they cancel each other out to give us zero. But here we have two extra electrons. Since electrons are negatively charged, that means we're going to have a charge of negative two. And we can enter that with a negative sign here, negative two. Finally, it asks us, what would the oxygen ion's symbol be? So the symbol for an ion is first the symbol for our element, which is going to be the letter O. If you don't know that, you can look in the periodic table to check. Then we add the charge afterwards. But Strangely, we put the number first and then we put the positive or negative sign. So oxygen would be oxygen two minus. So let's fill that out in our last box here. So to summarize here, the octet rule says the outer shell, the valence shell needs to be completely stable. So here, when we needed to add two electrons to fill our outer shell, we were gaining two electrons, which are two negatively charged things. And so our final charge was negative two. In this question, we have a neutral sodium atom shown. Again, we're asked, according to the octet rule, when are atoms most stable? The answer is always the same, when their valence shells are completely full. Okay, so in this question, how many valence electrons does this neutral sodium atom have? So the outer shell here is the third energy level, and we actually only have one electron in there. So we've got one valence electron. Then it asks, how many electrons should this neutral sodium atom gain or lose to become an ion? Well, we know that according to the octet rule, we want the outer shell, the valence shell, to be completely full. So we already have one in there, so we could add seven more electrons 
into our outer shell. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We could add seven more electrons into our outer shell. And then we'd have eight in total, which we know would be full. However, that's a lot of work adding seven electrons. Alternatively, we can just remove the electron that's there in the outer shell. Then that third energy level is now empty. And the second energy level, which is this one here, that would become our outer shell because the next one would be empty. And you can see there we've got eight electrons already. So that would be full. So when we've got less than four electrons in our valence shell, the easiest way to form the iron is to lose those electrons and remove that shell. So the energy level beneath that, which here is the second one, will become our valence shell. So in this one, how many electrons would it need to gain or lose to become an iron? It would need to lose just one electron. Okay, now we're asked what would the sodium ions charge be? So in this question, we've lost one electron. Now let's just check on our uh, uh, periodic table here. Sodium right here has an atomic number of 11. That means it has 11 protons. So let's add that on our diagram. We've got 11 protons. And usually we have 11 electrons, but we just got rid of one. So now we have 10 electrons and 11 protons. Remember, electrons are negative, a charge of negative one. And protons are positive, a charge of positive one. So here we have one extra proton compared with the number of electrons. So we're going to have a positive charge here of one. So we can fill that in here. We don't need to type a positive sign because we know that the number one is positive one. So we can just put one there. Okay, lastly, drawing the symbol for a sodium ion. So that starts by drawing the element symbol for sodium, which is Na. If you don't know that, you can go and check in the product table. Here it is, Na for sodium. And then we add the charge as a superscript. And the charge was positive one. And when it's one for the charge, we actually don't write the number, we just do the positive sign to show there's one positive. So let's choose that one, Na plus. So there's our sodium ion symbol. So again, this works exactly the same way. We're looking for a full valence shell if we have less than four electrons in our valence shell, we're going to lose them to obey the octet rule and uh, end up with a positive ion. On the other hand, in the first example, we had more than four electrons in our valence shell, so we gained electrons to fill that, and so we end up with a negative charge in that case.